Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 7 tips that I have for junior developers. Uh, I want to preface this by saying that this is my second year in software development, so there's a lot that I am continuing to learn and uh, I'm, I'm going to always fail at certain things. Uh, there's a lot of things that I don't know, and there's a lot of things that uh, I can continue to improve on, on the things that I do know. Uh, there's really no right or wrong when it comes to um, how or where you started uh, in software development, because everyone starts at the beginning knowing nothing. So uh, my first tip is to don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot that comes along with this field and there's a lot of things that you will not know unless you go down the rabbit hole. So uh, whether you decide that you want to focus a ton on the DevOps side of things and you really like scripting and let's say you build out software that helps with DevOps pipelines, that's great. People actually do that. People are very skilled at that. Uh, typically, that's not the rabbit hole that I, I like to go down, um, but that's something that people do. There are other ways of going down the rabbit hole with like UI work. I don't really deal a ton with UI work, but it is something that I've dipped my toes in, I've played around with, but I don't know everything there is to know about UI or UI and UX. Like I just do not know those things. Uh, there are a lot of intricacies with like uh, back-end work that I still am exploring, and this is two years in, I, I still don't know everything that there is to know, um, not at least the right way, you know. Uh, when you first start your job, there's a lot of expectations that you have for yourself, at least if you're like me at all. You get in, you're ready to go, and you're thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be really easy. You know, I went to school for four years to do this. Well, uh, there's some truth to that. You know, you can get the tasks done. People are going to hand you things and you're going to take it and you're going to run with it. And you're going to go as fast as you can. But it, at some point, you're going to hit uh, a roadblock. You're going to get uh, severe burnout and you're not going to know what to do. You know, that's something that I ran into was I hit the ground running. I just wanted to solve everything. You know, um, we were using like uh, GitHub and GitLab and I just picked up an issue, I picked up a story, and I started running with it. Like, that's what I did. Um, I wanted to go ahead and do the best that I could do. So I told my, uh, my mentor, my supervisor, hey, I really, it, like, I've already gotten all three of these issues done. What's the next one? I want to pick up the next one. And he's like, whoa, that's, that's really crazy. You got that done really quick. Okay, well, I'll hand you something else. And something that he told me was you always will get more work. There's always work to be done. So don't overwhelm yourself. Do not like feel like, oh, well, I don't really deserve this job. No one is expecting you to be a senior on your first year. Uh, even within the first six months, if you can get uh, just a couple of tasks done, that's a big deal. That's a huge contribution. Even if it means writing testing, uh, unit tests, that's that's a big deal. You learn a lot from writing unit tests, you learn a lot from just writing code, you learn a lot from just looking at problems. So don't feel super overwhelmed. Uh, the next one that I have for you is finding a mentor. Uh, that's one of the things that got me into my first job was having a mentor. Um, he wanted to take me on board. It was just one of those things where I uh, took a class and he just so happened to be working full time somewhere and I really wanted to join him. So uh, I kind of dove into a field of computer science that I never thought I would. I got into uh, AI development, which is completely different than something that um, I'm used to. Like I did not know enough about artificial intelligence machine learning, I didn't know enough. Um, I still feel like I'm always learning. It's not something that you're gonna 
figure out overnight. Uh, so having a mentor that is going to teach you and give you a direction on, okay, well, I learned this, this, and this. Um, these are the things that I use to learn. Or, um, you know, having those questions for somebody that, like, hey, hey, I really don't know how to solve this problem. And I don't understand the intricacies of, like, how to actually solve this problem. That's what a mentor is there for, is to help you. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to have a mentor right out of the gate. But as you work your first year, if you don't know anybody, look for somebody that you see that has good character, does good work, and wants to get their job done. Um, there's always those people at a company. They're, they're the ones that the company uh, thrives on. So uh, focus on trying to help, um, help yourself through finding a mentor. Find a mentor that's going to help you and can um, empathize with you whenever you know you get to a point where you're struggling a ton um, even when you feel like you're about to get overwhelmed and you know tip number one doesn't quite go so well and you can't you can't help that overwhelming feeling um, definitely go to a mentor and talk to them the third tip I have is to actually discover tools you want to find tools that you can put in your tool belt. At the beginning, you're probably only gonna have maybe like a couple of things, you know? Maybe you're really good at using Linux and the company uses Linux a ton. So that's great. Now you have something that you can uh, feel comfortable with. So maybe you take on more tasks with, um, you know, setting up repos and putting applications together just to test them. Uh, maybe you're really good at testing things. So maybe that's something that you fully learned. Let's say uh, you're in Python and you've finally figured out every PyTest fixture uh, known to mankind. If you know what PyTest is, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but if you get really good at testing and you find uh, packages and uh, to like different tools that actually help you, um, use those to your advantage. I know people, um, we live in an LLM world right now. There are people that have uh, LLMs on site. Uh, you can pick up tools really fast just using LLMs. Not that they're gonna you know, solve all your problems. In fact, they may actually make it harder, but it may give you a good head start into, okay, well, I just wanna learn something really, really quick. And then take a deeper dive later. That's something that you can do is to discover um, tools because eventually you're going to have your own set of tools and you're gonna run into situations where people are like well we need to use this tool well you want to build up opinions and preferences over time as you're working so that way you know how to design you know how to uh, work with other tools tools that you don't know how to use otherwise so learning and finding tools that you can use will help you in the long run. Um, even your development environment uh, is considered a tool. Find an uh, uh, environment that works for you, whether you're using like a Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ or whatever. You just need to figure out what works for you. The next tip that I have is to build outside of work. This is something that I usually struggle with because uh, I find that I go down rabbit holes a lot so I'll start building something outside of work and then I won't finish it but one of the things I realized is even if I don't complete uh, a project which you want to try to complete your projects don't be like me but uh, to complete a project is a big deal um, it, but playing around with technologies that you don't know uh, like I recently had played around with the idea of Langchain uh, and that's just something to get your foot in the door. Something that you can figure out how to actually, uh, you know, you got to figure out how to piece things together. So being able to build your uh, portfolio outside of work is a big deal. Um, being able to desire to code outside of work is a really big deal. but. This isn't a make or break. 
don't think that you have to sit there every single day and code something out. If you want to get really good really fast, it's really good for you to work on projects outside of work. Um, you have to love the work you're doing or you're going to have a hard time in software. So find stuff that you like to do. Um, an alternative to this is to uh, read and watch videos. And it's always fun for me, personally, to watch videos of somebody building a full-fledged application and seeing why did they do this? Why did they do this? Because they're not always going to get it right. They're just not. Um, not everybody is going to design something really great on the first go, especially if you're watching a YouTube video. Uh, nobody gets it right the first time. Um, there's always ways to improve your code, um, unless you're just a wizard. So uh, I don't know of any wizards, so uh, I definitely do not make great code uh, all the time. That, there might be a few times where I'm like, this is pretty good, but not all the time. So being able to work outside of work and finding something to help you progress is a big deal. Um, the next tip that I have for you is develop skills as you go. There's going, I've kind of hinted at it a lot, but build and develop skills as you go about doing work. Take the time to learn how something works. Don't just solve the problem and not understand how to do it. That is the biggest mistake that I made was developing a skill or trying to um, just rush through fixing something and not actually uh, developing the skills as I went. Uh, really understanding what problems I just solved. Because um, there's a lot of times where you can fix something by um, you know, just checking the box, you know. Maybe the variable name was, uh, somehow changing one variable name just worked and all of a sudden it, you know, you don't have any problems. Obviously that's a really, really like simple example, but there's edge cases and times where you're going to fix something and it seemed really easy and it's like, okay, cool. Well, you need to know the full effect of why that change actually worked. Like, why is that better? Why did this work? Um, so that helps you develop your skills as you go. The more problems you take on, I would say the harder problems you take on, the better you will be. Now it may be really risky at work, you know, how am I supposed to work on that major feature? I can't work on that major feature. You are not alone um, in those kind of feelings, but they're worthwhile if it pays off at the end of the day. I um, have learned a lot from taking on really hard tasks. Um, I've taken on hard tasks just so my coworkers didn't have to work on them. Um, and it makes life a lot easier um, whenever you start to take on harder tasks and they become easier. They're easier tasks at, that, at the end of the day. And it helps the business. It helps you grow and it helps the business grow. So, uh, my sixth tip, which I hope I actually numbered these right, but yeah, this should be the sixth, uh, is to take a break. Um, you can get really overwhelmed in your junior years. Um, like as a junior developer, you're sitting here like I, uh, am, you know, not as good as all the other people, I'm uh, not doing really well. Well, one, don't don't compare yourself to the others. They've had like eight years of experience or six years, and the guys that you know know more than you started from a different place. So everybody starts somewhere else. So it's really good for you as a software engineer or a software developer to take a break, uh, find something that you like to do outside of computers. I know that's very difficult for some of us. I loved gaming out all the time. Um, I found that doing something else outside um, is just, it just works wonders. And maybe at the end of the week, you're just sitting there and you're tired and you're beat and you don't want to look at a screen ever again. That's a normal feeling. Uh, I've been told by so many people, find something you like to do outside, find something that you like to meditate on, something that you like to think about. Um, find something that uh, that gets your gears turning. Trying to actually like find things outside of the computer screen because 
eventually it's gonna get overwhelming and it really does at times. Remember, you're gonna spend a ton of time in front of a computer screen doing software engineering. So don't let it rule um, your life and your time. Lastly, remember where you came from because there have been a number of times, there's been a, um, a group of friends of mine um, from the university I went to that have called me up and asked me about questions about, uh, you know, how do I get over this feeling? Um, you have to remember where you came from. You know, you go to the beginning of your first year um, working and you realize, I really don't know anything. There's a lot of things that I will not know. Um, and, you know, I've learned a lot over the past two years. For me personally, I've learned a lot in the past two years. Uh, but looking back and realizing I really didn't know as much as I thought I did, um, I also realized that I needed to give myself a little, a little more grace because it's very hard. Software development is very hard. It's not something that anybody can take on. Uh, you know, you're dealing with harder problems than the average person. You know, don't think that, um, you know, software is an easy job. It's not easy. It's very difficult. Um, in fact, a lot of people um, know that it's really difficult. That's why everybody, you know, whenever they're talking to you, they're like, oh, well, you're a software engineer. You must be really smart. Um, well, don't let, don't let that, uh, that be an indicator of like, oh, maybe I am just really, really smart. Obviously, you know, you, you, you don't know everything. Uh, and it's a humbling experience, um, but also recognize there's a reason why people say that to uh, engineers, because it's a difficult job. So feel free to say something in the comments about your experience as a junior developer. I still consider myself a little bit of a junior developer, uh, definitely still a junior. I'm getting into the mid-range, I'm in the middle of that transition, but while I'm starting to think about it and um, starting to advance my career, I uh, wanted to make a video kind of talking about what are some of the things that um, I had thought about for you guys and anybody else that's dealing with um, software development and issues like that. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the other videos that I post on this channel are helpful. Um, if there's something that you guys want me to do a video on, uh, go ahead and leave something in the comments below. I am totally down to try something new and learn something new, um, and I will gladly go ahead and make a video on that. Um, I also am interested in bringing in other people that actually know about certain topics more than I do, so if there's a topic that you really want to learn, I can pull somebody in that's a little bit more advanced than I am. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya!